Hello, welcome to a new edition of Cracking the Cryptic, um, where today uh, I'm going to try this puzzle that's just been sent in to us by email um, by somebody who says that this appeared in their local paper and they, uh, they'd like us to have a go at it. Now, the reason I was intrigued is that you can obviously see from the shape of the numbers in the grid, this is a puzzle with some unusual symmetry and therefore I'm quite surprised it's a, you know, a, a puzzle that's been seen in the newspaper because most newspaper puzzles are uh, created by computer algorithms which don't tend to produce some lovely sym symmetrical digits like this. So I don't know whether this puzzle will turn out to be a computer generated one or not but I thought we should have a go. Now if you'd like to have a go at the puzzle you can click on the link under the video and that'll take you to our software and you'll see exactly what um, I'm seeing. And you can have a go first or afterwards as you like. So let's have a go. Ones, ones and this one. So I can put a one in the grid. And pencil marks some ones up there. Here. Here. Can't see as to how to do anything more with ones, so let's move on to twos. Twos, twos, threes. I'm going to be slightly facetious now and say that if I was Mark and I was solving this puzzle, I'd immediately guess one of these threes, just to, uh, to bifurcate immediately. Uh, but I reject bifurcation. I will not do it. So. Um, those of you who want to see that, I'm afraid you better go and look at Mark's videos. <laughs> ah, look at that, 1-6 here. So we've got a 1-6 pair. I might just mark that in slightly differently as well. Um, okay, now can we do anything with that? Uh, hmm. I'm not seeing how to. If, we, if you check the contents of column 4 here, you can see we need 2, 3, 8, and 9. This square here can be a 2 or a 3, but there's not really anything else. Uh, I suppose that one can be a 2 or an 8. So we'll pencil mark some 9s at the bottom, just in case that turns out to be helpful. And carry on with pencil marking other digits. So we can pencil mark 4s here. Fives. Seeing anything with five, sixes, we've sort of started to look at. So, ah, there's a seven. This seven here, and these two sevens mean we finally get to place another digit. Sevens in one of these two squares here. Sorry, my eyes were just taken there. I was looking at the sevens, but this square is restricted because. We've got a one, seven, eight, nine in the row and one, two, three, and five in the column. So what can this be? We've got a four in the box, so actually this can only be a six. Let's see if that gives us anything. doesn't give us anything but if I get get stuck I'm going to look at sixes again I'll tell you why um, this six here means this obviously it means there's a six in neither of these positions now that means if we look down column three the sixes are in one of three squares this square this square or this square and in these two squares it's marrying up with this one six pair that we found here so the sixes are corresponding now that it, that can be indicative of um, patterns like swordfishes. So I, I'm not going to go there yet because hopefully we won't need to. But if we get stuck, I'm going to look at these sixes again. Sevens, um, eights, did we do eights? I can't remember. Um, eights down here. Eights here. Nines in one of those two squares. Uh, nines in one of 
these two squares. Another look at this column. We've got five digits in it now, so we need four, seven, eight. And we, ah, that's an eight. Look, because we have a four and a seven in the row and a nine here. So this is an eight. Eight must be in one of these two squares now, and eight must be in one of those two squares. Ah, there we go. There's a correspondence of the eights. So the eights are locked into row eight and nine in this three by three block. And if we go over to the right hand side, we can see the 8s are locked into the same positions. Now we know row 7 needs an 8. So now there's only two space, spaces the 8 can go into. Ah, look, and that corresponds with the 8s here. So now we've got this arrangement of 8s going on in the rows this time. So this is very nice because now this square cannot be an 8 because we know that however the 8s are raised it's either going to be an 8 here and an 8 here or an 8 here and an 8 here so this square can't, can never be an 8 there's always an 8 in one of these two positions so let's remove that 8 this is an 8 and now now this square is a 2 or a 9, this square is a 3 or a 9. Um, 4, 7, 9 now along here. So this, oh hang on, that square is even better. So this square can only be a 9 because there's already a 4 and a 7 in the row. That's a 9. This is not a 9. This must be a 4 or a 7. This is a 4 or a 7. Um, 7, 9. 9's locked into one of these two squares. Uh, okay. Uh, don't look at these two squares, we're not bifurcating. Um, let's, just, let's just do something. This is going to bug me if I don't check it. Right, so looking at column 4, we've got 6s in those two positions. Let's look at column three. Where can sixes go? This square, this square, and this square. So I need to find another column with a similar restriction. Um, so don't think we're going to find it down column one. Um, in column one, the six can go here, here. No, let's just hope this. Those four positions. No sixes are possible in five, column five or column six because of the sixes we already have. In column seven, we've got, so this doesn't look great either. Uh, six, six. No, okay. It's a bit of noise coming from downstairs. If it gets too much, I shall pause the video. Um, and then we'll look down this column. Ah, there we go. So just take a stare at the grid, see if you can spot what I've just noticed there. It was the last place that was the useful place. So this is the pattern of sixes in the grid. And what we were looking for is situations where uh, the sixes are corresponding in terms of the positions they can go to in the rows. So you can see these two positions, rows four and five in column four three positions in column three and three positions the same three rows in column nine here now what this is this is a classic swordfish pattern it's a simple swordfish there's no no fins to this swordfish um, now what this means is however the sixes are disposed they must be uh, in terms of these rows here 
there will always be a 6 in either this square, this square, or this square. In terms of row 5, there will either be a 6 in this square, this square, or this square. And in terms of row 8, there will either be a 6 in this square, or this square. Those are the only possible um, arrangement of 6s in the rows. And you can test that for yourself. If you don't believe me, let's let's just let's just try it and see. So if, for example, uh, this was a six, then you can see there's only two positions now a six can go into in column three, and only two positions a six can go into in column nine. So we're either going to end up with a sixes like that, or if not that, we'll have the sixes like this. One of those things must be true. And obviously, if we started with the 6 up here, then the logic just it works in exactly the same way. Now, what that means, in turn, is that we can identify areas... And I'm just going to pause a sec. Okay, sorry, that should be better. It should be less, uh, less high-pitched shrieking. Um, now, what this means is that when we look at these rows, so when we look at row 4, row 5, and row 8, we can delete sixes from certain squares. So it's good practice to work out which squares. One of them is this one. Uh, one of them is this one. One of them is this one. Uh, this one. Over here. And this one, I guess. And that is it, I think. I might be missing one, but I don't think I am. So, how many squares has that affected? So we've got five new bits of information. We know there's a six. There's not going to be a six in any of the green squares. So hopefully what we'll find is that this matters. Um, right, let's look. So this square, we can only make this uh, a one. Can't, can it be a, th can't be a three? Can't be a, it can be a four, five. Can't be a six now, seven, eight, nine. So that square is already a lot more restricted than I was expecting. This is a one or a four pair. This square here uh, can be one or three, obviously. Can it be four? I think so. Five, no. Six, no, for the reasons mentioned. Seven, eight. Uh, this can be a nine as well, I think. Okay. Not that good. This square, let's have a look at it. So in this square, this can be two, three, four, five, can't be six, two, four, or nine, I think. This square over here, we need. Um, well, this square is a little bit restricted, isn't it? So one, two, three over here. This can be a four, can't be a five, can't be a six because of the swordfish. Ah, oh, bother, it can be a seven. <laughs> nearly, nearly. Um, right, okay. And now let's look at this one. So one, two, can be a three, can be a four, can be a five, can't be a six, can't be a seven, eight, or nine. So this one is a bit restricted as well. So in fact, it's it's a little bit helpful, but it's not really blown the puzzle open, has it? Uh, what next, we might say? This square, that square is restricted. One, two, three. Can be a four, can't be a five, six. Ah, uh, can be a seven. Can't be an eight because of the pencil marks here. Can't be a nine because of the pencil marks here. So, ah, there is a four, seven pair now. Look, in this row. So, this one can't be a four. Now, is there a way of working out why this can't be a 2 or a 9? We've got a 2, 9 pair as well, so we've actually got a load going on now in row 8. This is where we're going to have to focus our attention, I think. Um, 
seeing whether or not we can do better than that straight away because there are twos here look so we can pencil mark twos into those two squares I'm not seeing how to do it right so we've got one two three four five so we've got six and eight into the open cells here so six eight there six eight there so is that going to be enough to crack the puzzle? Six, eight. Obviously these sixes are arising in the swordfish position, so it's not quite, um, you know, the swordfish is not going to help resolve either of those squares. Seven, four, seven. I think these four sevens would matter. What am I missing here? Uh, let's have another look at the nines and the twos. Twos here. In this. There is something, isn't there? There you go. <sighs> okay, so now because this square can only be a six or an eight, this two all of a sudden becomes powerful because now in this three by three block, the two can go in one of three positions, but critically, the two has to be in column seven or column eight. And in there it's corresponding with the two in this box. So that means in this box, the two must be locked into column nine. It's in one of those two squares. And therefore, wow, it's corresponding with the positions of the twos in this three by three block. Therefore, the twos in this block must be in row one. And that finally, is enough because now this two forces there to be a two in this square and that is going to blow the puzzle open because it gives us a nine straight away which gives us a nine here which means there's a nine in either this square or this square so that's probably probably not that helpful but this two here is so good because it gives us a three in this square because previously this could only be a two or a three once this square is a three this square is forced to be a nine and this square is forced to be a two now let's see what we can do with that so nine nine now this square is a nine means this square is not a 9, which means this, uh, and it's not a 9 in that sense either, so this square is a 9. This square can't be a 2 anymore. 7, 4, 7, 9, 9. Ah, now this square is restricted because look, we've got twos pencil marked here pointing at this square. And threes over here. And what what can this square be, in fact? This square can be it can be a four. And it can be a six. So now there it that's good as well. We've now got a one four six triple look in row four of the grid Six. which is nice for many reasons the first reason is that one of these squares must be a four uh, 
Um, so that's where it can't be a four. Fours, fours. So this square here now must be a four. It's the only place that a four can go over in this block here. Four here, which ah, now that gives us a seven, it gives us a four here. Which means this is a four, this is a five to complete the block. trying to make sure I don't miss anything here so I'm going fairly slowly to so I'm careful now this 5 is probably helpful box of 5 into either this square or this square this 4 means this square must be a 7 which means this square is a 4 which means there's a four in one of those two squares. So now we've got a four five pair in effect in these two squares. We couldn't put an eight in here because the implication would be that this square needed to be a four and a five. So this is not an eight. Therefore this is the eight. Therefore this is a six. This is an eight. This should be a three. And this is a three. And are we, are we closing in on a solution now? Maybe. 4, 5 pair here, so this should be a 2, 6 pair. And this should be a 7, 8 pair, and you can see we have a 7 there. So 7, 8, 8, 3, 3, 2, 2, 6. Always exciting when things start to chain in these puzzles. 2, 2, 6. So now this square must be a 6, we could have spotted that before maybe, this has to be a 1, this has to be a 4, 1 and 6 in this order in the central 3 by 3, which makes this a 5. Now once this is a 5, this must be a 5, you can see we're looking for 3 and 6 to complete this, so that must be in this order. This 5 resolves 5, 1, 7, 2, 2, Four, four, five, five here, and hopefully one and six. What a beautiful puzzle that was! Wow, I'm seriously impressed. Now I am, I'm gobsmacked if that's in a paper. So, um, to the person who wrote in uh, and sent us the puzzle. Um, can you let me know the name of that paper that that appeared in? Because that had the feel of a very clever handcrafted puzzle. I loved it. So thank you very much for sending it. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.